Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is another day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in today. Amen. I want to read today out of Mark chapter 8, and verse, what is this, 34? Nope, that's, yep, that's verse 34. It says, when he had called, now this is talking about Jesus, when he had called the people to him with his disciples, he said to them, if a man, any man, would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever will lose his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. Whoever will save his life or try to save and preserve his own life, his own way of life. Whoever, I think this might be a little more uh, impactful. I don't want to say more impactful because what the Lord said is what he said, but but I could say, whoever will try to be master over his own life and salvation is going to lose it. Or, you're not capable of saving your own life. Don't try. You want to give it over to who? Jesus, to the Lord, right? But whoever would lose his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That was kind of stirring in me. You know, you see a lot of the world. You know, you've, if you ever heard, there's an old song uh, about the devil playing a fiddle against the guy. The devil went down to Georgia and they play a fiddle and stuff. And you've heard over the years these talk about you know, the selling their soul to the devil and these, you know, these big uh, supernatural exchanges. And you're like, oh, 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 well, that's just stupid and that kind of stuff. But it is, in a sense, what the the life of the world or the life our life on earth is it is are you going to hang on to your own life live your own life whether you have some demonic evil experience and you're like oh you know I'm, I'm going after that no the devil first of all he tries to entice he wants to entice people in any way that they can be enticed right but god is out to give life he's out to trap God is out to give us life. He says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? There's always a temptation to try to gain the world. And he doesn't say that, oh, well, it's terrible that if you gain the whole world. No, he says, what does it profit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? It doesn't say it's wrong to gain or wrong to grow or wrong to prosper or wrong to succeed. But it doesn't do you any good if your soul is lost. If you don't know the Lord, if you don't receive salvation, if you don't walk in uprightness, what does it profit you? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You're not going to make enough. You're not going to, what's billions? What are billions? What are trillions? You know, we can, those numbers are really, when you break them down, they're beyond our comprehension. They're just gargantuan numbers. What is it? What does it matter if you gain the whole world? How much can you give in exchange for your soul? How much will appease the legality of salvation? There's nothing. There is one thing that did. It was a blood sacrifice. It sounds kind of gross, but it was true. Something had to die for all of mankind. Actually, all of mankind had to die, but Jesus, God being so clever, so, uh, what do they call him? Sneaky something or other. You know, he's, he's sneaky. Jehovah's sneaky. That's the term. God being so sneaky, he knew the way to get in, to make the sacrifice for all of mankind. Then it's very simple. You come to him through faith in Jesus. It may not always be an easy walk. It may not always be roses and peaches, but it is very simple and it's very much worth it. Amen. Whoever, therefore, Jesus said, is ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And then right along this line, you know, what does it profit a man? Well, in Proverbs 21, 21, it says, he who follows after, what are we following? Not following after the gain, not seeking to profit the whole world, not seeking to cling to our own life. He who follows after righteousness and mercy. Thank God for his mercy and for the righteousness that comes through him. We are made through faith the righteousness of God in Christ. 
He who follows after righteousness and mercy finds life. What are you following? You're following righteousness and mercy, but you find life in doing that. You find righteousness and you find honor. I like this verse because honor there is the word kabod. It's the same one used for the heavy, weighty glory of God. It's also the same word that's used for honor, for, for like prestige. And it's the word that is used for money, for gold, for riches. You're following. You're not following. You're not pursuing ardently to be wealthy and full of prestige in the world. But you're pursuing righteousness and mercy. And in that, you find God's glorious, abundant wealth, his glorious promotion that he gives. Amen. And the last, I won't turn there, but in Romans 117, and I think there's three other cases in the Bible where it says the just shall live by faith. The just shall what? Live by faith, not just conduct our lives. You know, when you are made righteous in Christ Jesus, if you're pursuing righteousness and honor, we're pursuing God's way, we're living, uh, giving up our life, basically. Losing your life for Jesus' sake, meaning you're giving up the control of your life, saying, Lord, I follow you and I do things your way. I'm not the master of my own life. I have my own sovereignty, my own uh, will, and I gladly follow after the good shepherd. And in doing that, I do it by faith. I act by faith, but I also receive life. I live by faith. It doesn't say the just shall die by faith or the just shall barely get by by faith. They will live, and I'll say, and thrive and have life super abundantly, like Jesus said he came to give, by faith. Amen. Be blessed.